Hey guys, Tyler here. The Herogen are one of the most notorious antagonist species in Star Trek Voyager, a race of tall, nomadic humanoids from the Delta Quadrant. The Herogen are experienced and aggressive hunters, with little compassion or empathy for other intelligent life. Their entire society and culture revolves around the hunt, and Herogen travel in packs like wolves. Indeed, calling another life form worthy prey is a high compliment. The Herogen control a vast ancient relay network, presumably used for communication, that stretches all the way from the Delta Quadrant to the outer stretches of the Alpha Quadrant. In their multiple encounters with the Federation starship Voyager, we learn quite a bit about the Herogen's motives and a little bit about their origins. In this video, I'd like to examine the Herogen's biology, history, and culture and compare them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. The Herogen are described in various reference materials based on their on-screen appearances as having traits of both mammals and reptiles, much like the Cardassians and Jim'Hadar. This has led some to believe that the Herogen are byproducts of genetic engineering, which could explain their extreme hardiness and ability to survive in extreme environments for a short time. Herogen's skin resembles that of a reptile with a rough pebble-like texture, typically tan or beige in color, and Herogen also lack body hair. On the other hand, they are endothermic, warm-blooded, and viviparous, bearing live young. Though as I stated in my Gorn video, some earth lizards and snakes don't lay eggs either. Regardless, Herogen also stand apart due to their immense physical strength, afforded by their advanced muscular and nervous systems. Their sensory perception is acute, aiding them in their hunting tactics, and their impressive immune system makes them incredibly resilient to sedation. Herogen use an enzyme to break down the bones and muscle tissue of their prey, believed to be for consumption, is food. And Herogen blood is red in color, meaning it is probably iron-based and uses hemoglobin to transport oxygen. Herogen tend to surgically remove the skeletal system, internal organs, ligaments, muscles, and tendons of their prey caught in a fair hunt. Unusual relics bring envy from other Herogen males, and female Herogen pursue male hunters who possess unique trophies. Prizes are displayed in nets hanging from the walls or ceilings of Herogen vessels, and skulls are often mounted on a wall display. Most Herogen vessels travel alone with a skeleton crew, no pun intended. These ships can cover a radius of a thousand light years in half a decade and visit dozens of star systems per year. Occasionally, however, Herogen vessels are encountered in groups or packs, if you like, more common if they're hunting more challenging and resilient prey. Herogen culture requires a hunter to study his prey and understand its abilities and mindset, believing this is essential for preventing the Herogen from becoming the hunted. Hunters often paint their faces and helmets in a long-standing ritual. Herogen are also known to display disappointment when a hunt is unchallenging. While Herogen believe one must never sympathize with his prey, they do believe their prey should never unnecessarily suffer. However, after cultural contamination by Voyager leads Herogen to begin using holographic prey, they program the holograms to feel pain, fear, and distress and even to retain knowledge of prior events after their deaths, prompting an unexpected hologram rebellion. So yeah, the Herogen do tend to bend the rules a bit and relish in cruelty. While ancient Herogen civilization is widely considered to have possessed great scientific knowledge and advanced technologies, the species' transition to a nomadic existence has caused their cultural development to come to a halt. Nearly all energy is put into increasingly unproductive hunts in increasingly exhausted territories. And like the Jim'Hadar, 
Hirogen's starships are not built for comfort. The Hirogen way of life has remained largely unchanged for over a thousand years by the 24th century, leading some Hirogen to believe that their species is doomed to extinction because of their stagnation. As we learn in the episode Hunters, the Hirogen Relay Network, powered by small artificial quantum singularities, much like the engines of contemporary Romulan warbirds, is believed to be a hundred thousand years old. Voyager first uses it to communicate 60,000 light years with the USS Prometheus in the episode Message in a Bottle, and in Hunters, the Hirogen Sabbath sabotage, or sabotage, Starfleet's attempts to use the relay to communicate back with Voyager. They don't want no one touching their stuff, it seems. It's never been clear if the Hirogen built the network or if they just claimed it for themselves. Indeed, it is considered one of the great archaeological puzzles of the day. The Hirogen claim it's their technology, and the non-canon Star Trek Encyclopedia corroborates this claim, but it's never definitively proven in canon. That said, even though their Borg designation is over 5,000, cue Dragon Ball meme a little bit, the Hirogen may have been spacefaring and evaded Borg assimilation for millennia. They may have even conquered a previous incarnation of the Borg, if the theory about Borg coming in waves has any merit. Regardless, Hirogen civilization would be considered several times older than the oldest evidence for human civilization that we've found thus far. For instance, the Neolithic site Gobekli Tepe, literally Potbelly Hill, found in southeastern Turkey, is dated to between 9500 and 8000 BC, shortly after the beginning of the Holocene Epoch following the last ice age. Gobekli Tepe comprises a number of large circular structures supported by massive stone pillars, making them the world's oldest known megaliths. And in a fascinating display of early Neolithic religion and culture, many of the pillars are richly decorated with artwork of animals, clothing, and humans. The point is, this site stretches back an inconceivably large amount of time into our past. But the Hirogen, if they truly have been an FTL-capable civilization for over a hundred thousand years, a third of our whole species' existence, may have been flourishing as a quadrant-stretching superpower when the Neanderthals were still around. This brings me to the main point I wanted to make in this video. Just like we're never told how long the Hirogen have truly been around, we're never told if they've been hunters the whole time either. Of course, we can make some reasonable inferences. The fact that Hirogen society used to be more socially and technologically advanced means that, like humans, they could have undergone their own agricultural, industrial, and information revolutions. Indeed, on Earth, the first agricultural revolution, circa 10,000 BC, saw major transformations to the human way of life. As has has been evidenced by history, the ability to grow one's own food and settle in one place indefinitely have been offset by various adverse effects, particularly disease and warfare. Research has shown that the invention of agriculture has led to a reduction in the quality of our nutrition, with our new diets consisting of less iron and fewer vitamins, among other things. Additionally, the move away from foraging led to a slight reduction in height and life expectancy, both of which did not reach pre-Neolithic levels again until the 20th century. Multiple agricultural revolutions throughout history have, however, allowed for unprecedented population growth. This is especially true of the most recent agricultural revolution from the 1930s to the 1960s, which saw the invention of high-yield wheat and rice. And even thousands of years ago, as historian Jared Diamond points out in his book The World Until Yesterday, the widespread availability of milk and grains 
allowed mothers to raise multiple children concurrently. Naturally, denser sedentary communities supported accumulation of goods and tools, as well as specialization of labor. But food surpluses also meant that decision-making could be monopolized by a social elite not directly engaged in agriculture, industry, or commerce. The deep social divisions brought on by the invention of agriculture also fell along gender lines, with the centralization of government encouraging social roles to become more restrictive, a process rationalized through the enforcement of religious doctrine. This has led some admittedly pretty radical theorists to surmise that the invention of agriculture is, in a way, the worst mistake humanity has ever made. Now, you're probably thinking right now, who in their right mind could possibly suggest a thing? I mean, for God's sake, if you're a hunter-gatherer, you've got virtually no free time. You gotta spend your whole day chasing and running away from wild animals. Except, it's actually a huge misconception that hunter-gatherers had or have no free time. Many present-day societies on Earth who never invented agriculture for themselves have plenty of time to sleep, tell stories, make art and music, dance, worship, have sex, of course. It's also believed that the builders of Gobekli Tepe may themselves have been hunter-gatherers, as any evidence that they engaged in farming is far from conclusive. F farm from conclusive. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a good one. Domestication of animals also goes further back than the agricultural revolution, and we mustn't forget that farming is in and of itself simply a mode of food production. Hunter-gatherer societies today, and probably deep in the past, have always had time to do plenty of things besides hunt, er, and gather, er. Does this mean that agriculture is evil and we must return to our paleolithic ways of life? Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, to our knowledge, we've only run one trial of a society that develops digital technology, something that I value deeply as a major evolutionary step for our species. But it does present some interesting implications for how the Herogen are presented in Voyager. See, I, I brought it all back around. That's what I do here at Orange River. Support me on Patreon. Once again, we don't know if the Herogen completely bypassed a transition to agriculture and developed advanced technology with a more slowly growing population. Probably not. Being a nomad is kind of tough on a society's development, and the centralization of authority and innovation still appear to be key steps in the development of a technological civilization. Plus, if their way of life has remained largely unchanged for a thousand years and their technology has stagnated, that probably means that the hunt is a relatively recent invention, at least on historical timescales. The Herogen may then be a post-agricultural society, if such a thing could exist. Is this something that humans will have to face the prospect of becoming ourselves? Well, hopefully not, in my opinion. Even though agriculture has led to a reduction in the nutritional value of our foods, enabled the faster spread of disease, exacerbated social division, and put a strain on our planet's ecology, we are on our way to ameliorating all of these problems. Okay, well, not all. There will always be new diseases that crop up, but medicine will continue to improve. We know we're capable of minimizing gender and social inequality if we try, and in the past decade we've taken some steps, not enough steps, but some steps to actually address climate change while still improving our food production techniques. It won't be a smooth transition to reach a healthier, greener, and more equitable society, but Star Trek itself proves that we can at least imagine it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads, and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. 
If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. Long live the hunt. Yeah, I, I don't I don't remember if they ever actually say that, but you know, they, they might have. They might have. Live long and prosper. Thank you.